Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at functions and the reason it's called making tea is because in my opinion making tea is the best way to, to imagine a function. When you're making tea you might say whether to put milk in or how much sugar and if you do exactly the same thing every single time you'll get the same cup of tea and in Python it's very similar to that. If you call a function with the same arguments or default settings then you'll always get the same thing and functions are really useful because it means that you can reuse parts of your code so if for example if we stick with the t we wanted to start a coffee shop instead of saying instead of saying to everyone who works there so when a customer asks for tea you've got to put a tea bag in put water in and then if they say milk add milk and so on we just say when a customer asks for tea, make tea. And because we've already defined making tea, they know what to do. Let's look at some of the syntax. So when we actually call a function, there are multiple ways of doing it. So the most simple way is to just call the function name. So I've said identifier because that's what makes your function separate. For example, make tea. And then someone will just make tea. But you might want to add an argument, and that argument might be adding milk. So you might say, make tea true so do add milk or make tea false don't add milk then you can add multiple arguments so you might say so you might say make tea true zero where you're asking for no sugars and the way you specify that is through arguments because otherwise it would run the same thing every time or you'd need one function to make tea with milk one function to make tea with no milk and so on then you can add uh, arguments for example, if you were add, adding up a lot of numbers, then this would say you can add as many numbers as you want. And when we did the print function, this used this. So we had values that we wanted to print, and they were all separated by a comma. And then we can have keyword arguments, so if you want certain things to be set. And if we go over that with a print statement, so we can start simple and just say print and very simply it'll print out and then we can run that and it's going to print nothing which isn't very helpful but we know it's worked. There we go, so it's, it's printed nothing. So now we can add an argument. So let's say I want to print hello and run it again. And we've called print with hello. And then let's say I want to print something else. So this could be a second argument. And we'll put goodbye. And run it again. And you can guess what's going to happen. Because there we've got two arguments. But with the print statement, you can have as many arguments as you want. So I could just keep going. Uh, and that's sort of highlighted here by this dot, dot, dot saying that you can add anything and that's because instead of having a required number of arguments it's got this star args then you can see we've got some keyword arguments so here you write them differently so if we add a keyword argument for example end we might say our end is equal to end and then we know that the end is just going to print end there we go and we can add as many args or keyword arguments as we can. And as you can tell, you've been using functions already. So along with print, we've used input. And this just has a single argument, but we're not going to use it again. We've already seen it. What if you wanted to create your own function? Well, you just use this def keyword. And you can see this is exactly the same. We'll talk about why there's an equal sign in here as well but it's just exactly what you want to do but you've got a colon at the end so you call your function the name of the function a series of arguments args quags the colon to say you're defining and that colon is so easy to forget and then a series of statements that you want to run and note that here we have this indentation and that's really important because as soon as you stop having these tabs or four spaces if you want although you can make it I think any number 
then it's no longer part of the function. So if you're going to call the function, then you'd probably call dedent it and call it here. So you haven't got that tab and it's no longer part of the function. And if you remember I mentioned in the very first video that Python relies on these spaces because other languages you have semicolons, you can write the whole thing on one line. But in Python each tab uh, is very important. And if you to add another tab, then that would cause an error because it would be neither part of the function nor not and it would just break. So let's create a function called make t. So we're going to def and make t. And then put the colon and we're just going to print we made t. And then we're going to run it. And it looks like nothing's happened. And that's because we've just defined a function and we actually need to call it. So now we're going to actually make t. Because before you run a program, it will define print and input and all these predefined functions. And so if it was to run them all, then it would be pretty rubbish. So that's why you have to run a function after you've defined it. So now we'll call it. Again, this is the simplest way, no arguments. And we made t. And now we're going to add some arguments. So first we'll add milk and then sugar. And now you can see that we've got the two arguments separated by the comma. And we want to change the actual function. So I'll add it so that it says what we're going to put in. And I'll start at the end. And we've got sugar. And then here we're going to do something clever. So first we're going to convert milk to an integer from a boolean. And you can see that if we have true, it's going to give us 1. And if it's false, it's going to give us 0. So now we're going to get 1 or 0 out. Then we're going to multiply this by milk and and that means that if we've got milk so milk is true then it'll print milk and and if it's not true then it will just skip over that part and we'll just get we made tea with and then sugar and the number of sugars so now we can run it And we can immediately see there's an error. And it did highlight this, but it's because it's asking for two arguments, but we haven't included any. So we'll add them. So we're going to say true, and then zero for sugars. And then we'll run it again. And there we go. We made tea with milk and zero sugars. And so because we've got this function, we can just call it again. And maybe this time we want different requirements. So we're going to have no milk, two sugars, run it. And there we go. And there is a tiny error there where we've got the two spaces because for the section about the milk it's printed it as a gap and we could change this by adding spaces and then setting the separation to zero so we will run it and you know what to expect and the spaces have put themselves in properly
But what if we wanted to fix the error from before and if you didn't specify, we had some default values. So imagine I said to you, can you make some tea? And I said, do you want milk and how much sugar? And you didn't respond. You'd be quite annoyed if I didn't make tea. So you'd rather there was some default. So we're going to set the default sugar to zero and the milk is equal to false. So if you don't say anything, we'll make it the easiest way possible without milk and sugar. And so we'll just fill those in. And when we say that we want something, we're going to overwrite those. But when we don't specify it, we can see that it's come out with the default values. And you can have those at the end. So let's say we just want to have one default argument. So I'm going to delete the milk argument. So you have to specify whether you want milk. And then I'll fill it in as tr true. And then I'll run it. And we can see that it's run and it's been successful. But what if we want to specify sugar but not milk? So there we go, we run it. And we can see that we've received an error, and this is non default argument follows default argument. So what we have to do is we have to put all our default arguments at the end. So you can't have a non-default argument before a default argument. And that's just so that you can specify what's what. And so we'll set the default for sugar back to zero. So what if now we want to store our T? So I'm just going to put some variables in. Just going to change it. Then we're going to print out all of our T that we've just created. And we'll just separate them on a new line. So each one will come on a new line. We'll run it. And we see it's printed out what we had from before, but then it's also printed out none for our T's. And that's because our function hasn't given anything back. If you take the input function, for example, then you put in a prompt and it gives you back the input that has been typed in. Whereas if you try doing that with a print, you wouldn't get anything back. So now we can add the return keyword, and that means that the function gives something back. So you notice when we use the shell, it returns the result. And it does that automatically. So with print, it's slightly different because it prints it out and then gives nothing back. But if we take the input, it's in essence got a, a return at the front of that function that you don't see. So type in again, it shows that I inputted again and it's returned that. And so let's modify our function to have that return keyword in so that we can store that value and then maybe use it again. And we can't use this separation because it's a string. And what this would give us back is a list of these individual strings, but we want it to be a single variable. And so we'll just add them together instead of putting commas in to create a single string. And because some of these are necessarily going to be strings, we have to convert everything into a string. So I'll just turn sugar into a string. And so now we're going to get back a single string from our function. Just delete at the end. And I'll comment out the print statement and get rid of the bits at the end.
And in case you're wondering, you can use comments just by putting a, a hashtag at the front and it won't print anything after the hashtag. And you can use them to label your code as well. So we want to say that was a function that made T if we wanted someone else to read it. But we'll run it. And we can see that because we've taken out that print statement, now nothing's happening, it's not done anything. And that's because we've stored the values and then not output them. And so just un uncomment the print function and it should print them all out line by line at the end. And there we go. And that brings the video to an end. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you again, same time next week. Till then.